Good morning. I am Stampin' Dee Dee, and I am here with you this morning to look at some ways to enhance our cards. Um, we're all, I'm always looking for a way to just make it a little different, to sort of get me out of my rut. We all get in a rut, don't we? And I think especially as um, newer card makers, beginning card makers, we um, it, it's easy to get into a rut. <clears throat> and these are some ways that you might use to um, step out of that rut. But first of all, I do want to tell you about a Fun Fold Fair. And that will be April 1st here in my home or April 6th will be online and it will be a Zoom class. So um, we're going to, you'll make three fun fold cards. You get to pick out the three that you wanna make and you'll make three fun fold cards. So if you'll look on my, um, on my Stampin' Dee Dee's Doings page, you'll see the details for that fun fold fair. Um, but you have to RSVP by March 23rd, which is a week from today. And the reason is, especially if you're doing it online, I need to have time to get those kits to you. So you'll have to make your selection. I'll show you the five or so fun folds and you'll pick three of them and I'll get the kits to you and, and um, then we'll be ready to go on April 6th. But for the April 1st, um, you need to RSVP too, and that gives me time to to get enough kits ready for everybody to um, choose what they want to do. All right, so let's get to this. Um, we're going to look at four different techniques. So I'm going to pick three of these up right now, and we're going to look at the first one together. And the first one is simply using... An embossing folder. You know, an embossing folder can make so much difference. Um, let me turn this down. So much difference to a card. Now, I don't know if you can see. I use the, I think it's called the Worn Type 3D embossing, embossing folder for this one. But if you can see the texture on it. It really adds so much to the front of a card. And I often use um, embossing folders. Sometimes I'll just emboss one little section. Uh, sometimes I'll emboss the whole front like I did on this one. So <clears throat> this was a really simple card to put together. These flowers, a lot of times when I'm cutting out for a workshop or a class or just for me, I have extras, and so I, I put them in a little um, container. And so all I have to do is pull that container out and <clears throat> find something in that container that, that I can use for a card, which is what I did here. These flowers were extras, um, so I pulled them out and just stamped a couple of leaves and stamped some splatters, which that's another thing that adds interest to a card is to add some spots or splatters to your card. And um, a lot of the stamp sets will include a splatter stamp. And so there's lots of different ways to add a splatter. Um, but anyway, and then when I did my sentiment piece, I added the same splatters and that just sort of pulls it all together. Put a ribbon and a bow and you've got a card. Run this through the embossing folder. There's lots of really neat, really pretty embossing folders, both in the annual catalog and in the mini catalog. Um, and on the um, online in, in exclusives, um, you now have the opportunity with Stampin' Up to go online and look, uh, click on the online exclusives, and those are some items that are only sold online. They're not in any catalog. They're only sold online, and one of the offerings is a set of three embossing folders, 
and I think one is a dots and one is like a hatch and the other one I'm not I don't remember what it is so um, that's one way you can get a set of embossing folders that you will use over and over again to enhance your cards all right so that's one way the second way that we're gonna look at is to add a little bit of color um, besides just your black memento stamp. And I just, this is just a real simple uh, daffodil from the Daffodil Delight set <clears throat> that I colored in die cut and put mounted on a, an, a rectangle. But what, what I want us to look at is the sentiment, and this is Easter Blessings, and I didn't want it to be just black. I wanted it to have a little bit of color. I'm gonna hold it up here a little bit closer so you can see. This is done in two different colors. Um, I think it's like Pool Party and, hmm, I'm not sure what this one is, um, but it two different colors. And the way we do that is with our Stampin' Right markers. Now, you can purchase these um, in lots of different ways. They come in sets. They come the whole, you can get a whole um, set of them. You can get the in colors, just the in colors. And these two are from the, the current in colors. This is Parakeet Party and, um, what is it, Rising Starry Sky. Parakeet Party and Starry Sky. So don't use your Stampin' Blends on your stamps. Um, they're alcohol markers and they won't work, but these are um, water-based markers. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I've got my sentiment, Easter Blessings, right here. And I also, when I cut out sentiment labels, and I have extras, I put them in that same box. <laughs> so I always have lots of extra sentiment labels. Um, and I just pulled this out. I just wanna demonstrate this technique to you. So I want Easter and Blessings to be two different colors. I think, maybe, let me, I'm gonna lower this down just a little bit. All right, all right. So I'm I'm going. I want the blessings. I want the blessings to be the the blue. So I'm going to take the brush end of my Stampin' Right marker, and I'm just going to go over the Easter portion. So I'm just going to go over that. Make sure all the edges are covered. All right, and then I'm gonna take my Starry Sky and I'm gonna use the brush end. And now I'm gonna go over, and I do it on the side of the brush. Um, I'm gonna go over the blessings. And just make sure every surface is covered. Every raised surface, because that's what's going to stamp are your raised surfaces. All right, I think I've got it. Now, we're gonna give it a huff and stamp our sentiment. And that's just to moisten. I'm gonna hold it there just a minute so it'll soak up the colors. There we are. Isn't that pretty? Two different colors, Easter blessings, Easter blessings. So you can do that with any sentiment. You can also do it with your stamps, flowers or whatever. If you want to add some colors, some different colors to it, you can do that with your Stampin' Right markers. All right, that's step two to add a little interest. Now, step three, or tip three is to use score lines. 
um, add score lines to your card. Let me see if I can get this where you can see the score lines. Of course, you can see it really well in person. There, you can kind of see it there. There's one, two, three score lines here at the bottom and one that's going right down here. So I think you can see that from that angle. Like I said, in person, it's very visible and very attractive. So what we're going to do is make a card and I'm gonna show you how to do that. We'll make this card. So I'm using the Petal Park stamp set and I'm going to use Evergreen, Evening Evergreen Soft Succulent for my leaves and I'm going to use Rich Razzleberry and Fresh Freesia for my flowers. So let me get my set. So this is the Petal Park set and it's a two-step stamping set. Let me get my plastic off and I'm gonna start with the leaf outline. I'm gonna start with the leaf outline. Now I did a, a video on Petal Park just last week and showed you how to do these stamps so that they line up. So I'm not gonna go into detail about that, but I'm gonna use the same technique. I'm just gonna, oops, but I did it wrong side up. I'm gonna drop it onto the table, pick it up with my stamp, with my block. And then I'm going to use, this is the outline. So I'm going to use the darker color on the outline. Hmm. Let me move this just a little bit. There we go. All right, so I'm going to stamp up my outline stamp with this Evening Evergreen. <clears throat> and I'm going to stamp it like this right up here a little bit of an angle right there alright and now I need to Clean my stamp and put it away. And I'm going to do the filler now, the shading. A second stamp will have the shading. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to drop it down. Pick it up. And on this one, then, I'll use the soft succulent which is the lighter color, ink it up. All right. And I'm gonna line it up and it should line up because of the way we dropped it. It should line up pretty close, probably not perfect, but pretty close. Okay, there we go. Isn't that nice? Love that. All right, we'll clean that one off, put it away, and then we're ready for our flowers. All right, so we'll do the outline first, and I'm gonna do them the same way. It's really not as necessary. And the outline for the flowers, I'm going to do in the darker color, the Rich Razzleberry. There is a method that I talked about on my video. If you're going to punch, you want to make sure you have them um, lined up for the punch. But we're just stamping and coloring. So, all right. So, I'm going to put the big flower in this spot and the other two flowers in these two spots. Get it right where I want it. Okay. So there's those. Clean that. The red 
really, or the purples, really stain your stamp. So, they're clean. They don't look clean, but they're clean. <laughs> and now I'll do my shading. And I'm going to do the shading in the Fresh Freesia. Here we can see. Okay. All right. Okay. Fresh Freesia. Here we go. We've got the big flower on top, the two smaller flowers. There we go. All right. So I think on this card, I also added a few splatters. Um, this card has a little bitty splatter stamp. It's this one right here. And I, re I remember, I think I did it with the lighter Fresh Freesia, but I'm going to do it this time with the darker Rich Razzleberry. And I'm just going to add a few in there. It's already got some green splatters. But I'm going to add a few of the color. You see, you see what it does? I think it just adds some interest, and I love that. I love that it does that. All right, that's all we need, just a little bit. I'm going to put that stamp away. Now, the only thing we're... Oh, I, I know what I was going to do. I'm also going to take... Let me put... Get my plastic back off again. Put this down. Put my flowers back down. And I've got extra flowers in there. I should put them in my box. Because <laughs> they're just getting in the way. Now, <clears throat> I'm looking for this one. Nope. Here it is. It's hard to tell them apart sometimes. This is just... One of the little uh, fern-looking leaves. And there's one here that is the outline. And this one is the shading. And I'm just going to use the, the shading. And I'm going to use the dark, the, the evening evergreen. And add just a few sprigs in here. I'm going to add one right here. Right there. Whoops. All right. I've got to go over it again, so I have to get it up under me. All right. <laughs> I had to get where I could see it. All right. And I'm going to add one right up here. Mm, and maybe one right here. And one more right up here. All right, so we've got our sprigs. We've sort of filled in our spaces. And now we're ready to add our sentiment, which is Hello You. And that is from the, I think, um, Shaded. I think it's from the Shaded Summer set. I don't have it right out here, but I think it is. Hello, you. So we're going to add that with our green right up here. I'm going to add it right in that space right there. All right. Now we're going to add our little bit of enhancement here. We're going to we're going to score it. And I tried colored paper, and really, um, 
It doesn't show up any better than on the white, and that's why I went with the white. So let's bring in our trimmer. And I'm going to add one score line right down next to the Hello You. So just right there. Make sure you've got the scoring blade, the lighter colored blade. Let me get this down where you can see it a little bit more. There we go. So I'm going to do it several times. There. Can you see the score line? Oh, I got a little bit of ink back there. Let's see. Yeah, you can see that. Now, we're going to do it along the bottom. And I'm going to start about that far from the bottom. And I only want it on the front, and so I'm going to bring it over here to my middle score line. And I'm going to bring it across. One, two, three. Okay, we have one score line. Now I'm going to bring it down just a little bit, maybe a, maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe a, maybe a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to do it again, starting at my center. Okay, there's two, and now I'm going to do it one more time, just about the same distance. And you could actually measure it if you wanted to, make it a quarter of an inch or a half an inch. I'm estimating it right here. All right, so we have three score lines at the bottom. I'm going to put this away, and then I'll hold it up for you. Close my card and burnish it, and I managed to get ink on the back, okay, all right, can you see our score lines, I think that way you can see them, they add, I think, some delicacy to the front of the card, and certainly a little bit of interest, and the only other thing I did to this card was added um, these. Added some adhesive backed sequins. And some of them are that color of the flower, the fresh freesia. So we'll use those. And I'm just going to put one here. One here, and one here. All right, so we have finished this card. You really don't need to do anything else to it. You certainly could, but it's clean and simple, and yet it um, it's very attractive. And the interest, you've enhanced it with your score lines. So... I hope you'll give that a try. It's an easy way to enhance a card. All right, and then the fourth technique for enhancing a card is to use a mask and add just an area of interest. Masks are inexpensive and they're so easy to use. So what we're going to do, and look at the interest that it adds to that card. Now, I could have just left the, the bunny and the flowers, but to do this in the corner of the card just really brings some focus to that area of the card. So let's try this. Let me show you how to use a mask. I have my base of polished pink, and I'm going to go ahead and fold that and score it. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. These masks, let me get my package here. They, they are the Artistic Mix Decorative Masks. 
and they're in the annual catalog. It's $10 for this set of masks. So you get this mask, and you can mix these, you can stack these, and add so much interest. You get this with the large squares. You can do that over this. And it really, it's so interesting, so fun to play around with these, kind of the effect that you get, almost a stained glass effect. So you've got that one, then you have this one, more of the gingham. Um, and it's fun to take this one and overlay it with this one. And so you get the large, the fat, heavy lines, plus you get the the smaller gingham lines, or just by themselves. They're fun to use by themselves. Then you get, let's see, those are a different set. Um, this one, which is the flowered, and you can take that one and overlay this one on it. And again, you almost get that stained glass look. There's lots of different ways. I think this one, if you lay this one and and do this one over it, it just it adds some interest. Make gives it a different pattern. All right. And then the last one that's in this set is the sentiment um, sentiment mask. And you've got both pieces. You've got the piece that comes out. Um, plus, you've got the space. So you can take this and you can mask and leave this open space. Or you can take this and mask and have a shaded sentiment space. So if I were to, I'll just use the same color that I'm going to use on our card. Let me show you what I mean by that. All right, so if I choose to do it this way, I get my blending brush and my ink, and I would secure this down if I were doing it for real. And I just come along in here using this mask on the front of my card, and before you know it, you have an area that you can you can stamp your sentiment in that. And let me show you. It is just going to make it so interesting. There you go. Isn't that fun? So that, you could do it that way. Let me get this. I am... Okay. Or that's using um, that's using your your main piece. Which what happened to it? I set it aside. Oh, it's over here. I set it over here because you've got to be careful now because you've got ink around this. So you could do either one of those that way, or you could take the pop out piece. And I am going to secure this even for the demonstration i need to secure it this is um post-it cover-up tape wonderful stuff wonderful so i'm going to put it here and then i'll have to move it all right so i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to get my blending brush and i'm going to start here on my card front, so I, you know, you might have just a white piece, a basic white piece, or you might have your whole card front. Let me put that there. Oops. All right. I didn't do a very good job with it, but you get the idea. Now you have a space inside to stamp your sentiment. Now those are both have ink on them, so I'm going to have to be real careful because I am the inky person. I get ink on me every time I make cards. All right, so we're gonna put the petal pink or the polished pink away. 
Uh, no, we're not. That's what we're going to use. We're going to put the masks away, except for the one that we're going to use on this card, just to give us a focal point and a little bit of interest. Put that away. Okay. All right, I set these over here. All right, so let's go to it. So I'm gonna get our card front, which is the white, basic white. I'm trying to avoid that ink for right now. It'll dry, but, and let me put my evening evergreen away and get my polished pink back out. So you could actually do this anywhere. You could anywhere on your on your card front. I just I want my focal to be I want the focus to be on the rabbit at the bottom. And so I'm just going to do a little bit in this corner. I'm not going to square it off. I don't want it to look squared. I just want it to be random right here at the bottom. So let me, okay. And now I'm gonna take my blending brush. You could also use ink daubers. So your ink daubers are, um, they're like $5, the sponge daubers, $5. And I think you maybe get three. Your blending brushes, which I love my blending brushes. They're like $10 and you get three. So you decide how you wanna do it. And when I do this, I start off of the card. So I have a mat under me and I start off of the card and come up onto whatever it is I'm inking. And looks to me like I have pretty much covered what I want to cover. So let me get my tape up. Oh, yeah. That's nice. That's nice. Isn't that pretty? Okay. So, that's our focal point. Now, I think I shared in one of my previous videos that the playing, the Rain and Shine designer series paper, I took the page that had all the images and I die cut all of those images out and I have them stuck in my paper, my paper pack so that when I'm ready to um, make my card, all I have to do is reach in there and pull something out. And he's the one I pulled out. I do want to, um, let me get this stamp off. I want to add some flowers to the very bottom and I'm just gonna do that in my black because I'm gonna do my cinnamon in the black as well. I'm not gonna color them in, that's not the purpose of it. It's just to sort of anchor him. So I'm gonna put one round right there. And I'll do it again. And put the other round right here. There we go. And then he's gonna go in the middle. All right, let me get my flowers put away. This is the playing in the rain set. And like I said, I've, I did a previous video on this set. So, oh, happy day. That's the sentiment we're gonna use. No, I decided on this one to use a different sentiment. This is another one that I had. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my um, my box with sentiment labels and random sentiments, and I had this one in there. So I thought, you know, he kind of looks like a wild thing, and I need to use this. I need to use these random sentiments every chance I get. So I thought what I would do would be to banner this one. I'm just going to banner it. You, know, you cut a snip down the middle. 
cut from the corner to the snip, the corner to the snip, and you've got a banner. I have to put him on. I'm going to banner both. Let's see. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe I'll have that coming off the edge. All right, so we're going to put him on with dimensionals. He's a happy-looking guy, isn't he? Get him on. Dimensionals are wonderful. They're wonderful, wonderful. Give it a little bit of height. All right, he's going to be jumping around right there. And then we'll put our banner. And I've got a little piece of the polished pink ribbon. So we're just going to attach it to the back of the banner, back of the sentiment label with an ink, a glue dot. All right. Oop, I did it on the wrong side. I guess it doesn't matter. And I only want it sticking out just a little bit. That's plenty right there. So then I'm going to banner this one to match that one. And now I'm going to use um, glue dot or dimensionals to get this banner popped up as well. <clears throat> I think I'll use one right on the edge of that ribbon there and over here. All right. Okay. And we're going to put that on right right there. Right there. And we'll put it on our polished pink card base with our with our seal. Okay. There we go. Cute card. Cute card. Just with that little bit of that touch of uh, petal pink in there, polished pink. It really makes a difference in the card. All right. So I've shown you four ways to add some interest to a card with um, a mask and with score lines. And with our uh, stamp and write markers, just um, adding a little bit of color to the cinnamon or to the flowers, wherever. And with a an embossing folder. So those are just four ways that you can enhance a card that you can. Add a little bit of interest to it. You can um, perk it up a little bit and play around with that. I hope that I hope that um, that you will do this. I hope you'll try it out. The um, like I said, the masks are in the annual catalog. The blending brushes and the sponge daubers are in the annual catalog. And if you don't have somebody that you order through, I'm trying to get the paper down. This is my online store. DeannaBlackman.StampinUp.net, and I would love it if um, I would love to help you out. So you can um, message me or email me at SusieZoo at Verizon.net or um, comment. And any questions you may have, I would love to try to answer. I hope this has helped. I hope you've had a good time. You know, I've been so busy doing this, I haven't looked to see. Hi, Cindy. 
Yeah, great. Thanks for popping in. Hi, Kay. Thank you for watching. Yeah, I, I, there are tips that we all need, don't we? All right. Y'all have a blessed day, and um, I'll catch you next time.